Hello, uh, we're talking with Annie Walker, our workshop specialist here at Rochester Works, this morning about um, SCAR stories. So, Annie, could you just tell us what is a SCAR story? Well, Ted, really, a SCAR story is a way for someone to really convey to a potential employer, uh, to a possible networking colleague, uh, exactly how they've taken their skill set and actually used it and gotten good results. And it's a really good way to help people remember specifically what you've done. Why is it important to, to use one? I'm, I'm assuming you plan this out and prepare them ahead of time? Absolutely. Uh, what, a good way to do that would be to just take the accomplishment bullets on your resume that speak to how you've used your skills and how you've taken those skills and gotten good effective results to help someone understand how you can uh, reinvent that. Can you do that again for them either in a potential job or to help someone understand fully what value you're bringing to an organization. Well, what about for folks who aren't familiar with the SCAR story, what does SCAR stand for? Well, SCAR actually stands, stands for a, a couple things depending on how, what acronym you've heard. Um, we use it here as situation, challenge, action, result. And the other things you might have heard would be a star story where challenge would be replaced by task or SOAR where that would re be replaced by obstacle. But it's really um, what, what has happened what, and, and what was some challenges you faced in that task? What did you do and what were the results? Um, so what again. makes a good SCAR story? I think what makes a good SCAR story is being able to effectively convey uh, in a story-like form so people will remember how you've used your skills and how they've made a, a, an impact on an organization. Uh, for example, if you would ask me, Annie, would you want to work alone or in groups with your preference, uh, I would probably give you the standard answer that you'd find on the internet that said both. Um, but I would probably go a step further. I, I always call that do a little bit better. Uh, I would probably tell you that in my last role, uh, and even in the role I have now, uh, I actually not only uh, worked in groups, because that was part of what I did. I, co I collaborate here with many people, but I also have a lot of behind the scenes administrative work, and I think you need to have an essence of both. By being able to talk about that to someone, they can really get a picture of you know, what I've done, and it adds credibility to the fact I'm not just putting it down on paper, I've done it. So you would use these in an interview. Are there other places and times you would also use SCAR stories? Yes, I, I think it's effective. I think we all learn by stories, and I think people remember what we say. So if we're talking to someone, uh, a colleague, a potential client, a networker, uh, on what we do, uh, then we can sit and talk about our stories, and I think they'll remember that more. They're going to remember, oh, I remember that's the person that did such and such. Uh, and I think that that's what makes people stand out a little bit more. And in today's environment, when there's so many people out there looking for work, uh, you want to find as many ways as possible uh, to stand out. And star stories and scar stories, whatever way you want to call them, are really good ways to do that. Now, for someone who's actively looking for work out in the marketplace now, in the process of preparing for their interview, how many stories would you recommend they have prepared? Well, it's a scary number to some people when we first mention it, but we tell them 11 to 15. Uh, but really, if you've got your resume done and you've got your accompl accomplishments done and you've done the prep work, you've looked at the, at the potential questions and the lists that are out there and you've taken a look and uh, looked at your accomplishments to see, you know, what exactly can I use for the answer to these questions, uh, a little bit of prep will, will carry you a long way. Do you have any suggestions for folks who may have not written one before for like how to come up with the ideas for a, for a SCAR story, where to just generate those, I guess? A couple of things. I think you ask yourself the why questions. Um, you know, uh, what did I do that maybe was acknowledged? Uh, was there a time I was more creative? Was there a time I saved money? Was there a time I saved cost? Um, was there a time that I went above and beyond? Um, so ask yourselves those questions, things that you may not have thought about. And then what I always do is I actually start from the result and I work my way backwards. And then I go back and ask myself, or is there anything else on this result that I forgot? Especially things like, um, is it sustainable? Can I do it again? Have I done it again? Um, so, you know, doing it that way and rehearsing it. And, and there's nothing better for a SCAR story than practice. 
Well, thank you very much, Annie. I guess uh, one last question. Uh, any suggestions for resources if people wa do want to learn more, uh, either on the internet or live at Rochester Works? I think on the internet, obviously, you can find a lot of things. Um, we give them many, many resources. Right actually off of our Rochester Works website, we have a virtual career center that's a wealth of information. And here we also do several workshops. We talk about SCAR stories in our, in our resume classes so that they can learn the basics. Um, we talk about it and emphasize it and go into detail in interviewing beyond the basics in our ACE Your Interview classes. And we also do mock interviews where they actually get to sit back and practice. Uh, the, the scar stories because I think that hearing someone going back and forth and actually talking about it to different people really helps and so it's one of those things where practice makes perfect. Thank you Annie. You're welcome. Thank you.